So we talked about the narrow band FM case. Again, what we're trying to do is come up with uh, a formula for the bandwidth for FM. We've got a, we've got a formula for the power, but we want a formula for the bandwidth. And we looked at the narrow band FM case last time. And the bandwidth was <coughs> two times W, the same as for broadcast AM radio. But again, that, that was based on an approximation of called the small modulation index or the narrow band FM case. So we want to come up for, come up with a more general bandwidth expression that applies for wideband FM. Okay. And we're going to look again at the tone modulation case, but remove that restriction where beta beta was small. So for, for tone modulation, our message is, is just a sinusoid. And so our FM carrier, AC cosine two pi, uh, C of T plus beta sine two pi FM of T. Okay, so why do I have a cosine here and a sine there? It's a mistake. No, it's not. So remember, this is this is no. This is the instantaneous phase, right? And FM, the instantaneous frequency is proportional to the message, okay? And the phase is the integral of, proportional to the integral of the instantaneous frequency. So I, it, we, went, we had this last time in the notes, so on, on Friday. So you integrate the cosine, you get the sine, and then the beta absorbs this constant that involves the AM and the KF, and then the you get a one uh, a one over two pi FM when you do that integration. All that's all that's embedded in that in that beta. Well, where beta is delta F over FM or KF AM. FM. Okay, so delta F is the range um, of instantaneous frequencies. And that actually depends on the amplitude and then this, this uh, FM uh, um, multiplicative constants, this KF term. FM is essentially what we've been calling W. It's, it's the frequency of our, our message, but it would also be equivalent to the, the the bandwidth of our message signal in this case, because it's just a pair of impulses. Okay. For narrow band FM, beta much less, less, less than one, we had the transmission bandwidth was approximately two FM or two W. Okay. Same as AM. And there was some hope originally with, with FM that the bandwidth would just be actually a, a function of this delta F, which we could control and make as small as desired. But you know, it turned out, well, that wasn't true. We couldn't actually get it to be smaller than, than AM. So FM is going to have a larger bandwidth than, than AM. So we want to find the transmission bandwidth for an arbitrary beta. So it can be shown, and I'm not going to go through the derivation. You can thank me later when you see the derivation in the text. It's not hard. It's actually just expressing uh, this in terms of a Fourier series okay, and then solving for the coefficients. But this is actually 
so the derivations in the text, but it's a, it's expressing this. This is actually periodic, so it does have a Fourier series. You can solve for the Fourier series coefficients. Normally, we would call those like a n. I'm going to use this notation. They actually they depend on the value of beta. Okay. So you'd have to recalculate the Fourier series coefficients, but these are nothing more than different notation for Fourier series that we and what we've used in the past. And then it's, it's cosine of two pi C plus N FM of T. Okay. So it's not quite a, a Fourier series. It's actually a Fourier series expansion of like the phaser component. Um, this, we have terms, when n is zero, we have a term at fc. When n is one, we'd have a term at fc plus fm. When n is minus one, we'd have a term at fc minus fm. Those are our narrow band fm components. But we also have terms at two fm, three fm, minus two fm, minus three fm. So it's a whole bunch of spectral lines around the carrier frequency. Um, this is nothing more than the, the amplitude component. So in the derivation of the Fourier series, that integral that results is an integral that occurs in other areas of physics. Um, and it's a solution to a particular differential equation. It's called the nth order Bessel function. of the first kind. Often students will see that and get really concerned. Oh, I've never seen that before. For us, this is really, you know, these are just coefficients and we'll look at them in a table. You can use octave to find the value, but they're nothing more than numbers. They de the numbers depend on N, you know, the, the term in the Fourier series here and then also our value of beta. Um, but SFM of T consists of discrete frequencies at FC, FC plus or minus FM, FC plus or minus two FM, Fc plus or minus three Fm, and so on and so on and so on. So it looks like you know, this, this thing, you know, the summation goes to infinity. It looks like this would have an infinite bandwidth, that Fm has an infinite bandwidth. And, you know, theoretically it would have, but these J and a beta terms, if they get small enough, we can talk about a practical bandwidth, you know, if they get small for larger values of n, and, and that turns out to be the case. Okay, so we can actually write down the Fourier transform for this case. This is AC over two, and then it's a sum of J and beta are the amplitudes and a cosine is nothing more than a pair of spectral lines at the frequency of the cosine, positive and negative frequencies. Let me squeeze this one in down here, delta F plus FC plus NFM. So let, let me sketch that and then we'll come back and talk about these, these amplitudes, those, those uh, Bessel function terms. So, and here I'm just going to show the one-sided spectra. So we, we, have a, we have a term at FC, and that's with n equal to zero. It's going to be AC over two, and then it would be J zero of beta. Okay, it's going to depend on the beta value. N would be zero. And then we would have one at FC plus FM, and it's AC over two 
times J1 of beta. And similarly at FC plus two FM would be AC over two J2 of beta. And at FC minus FM, FC minus two FM. Now I've shown these impulses, these impulses in the frequency domain as, as getting smaller. And I don't really know that until we find out what these J0 of beta, J1 of beta, J2 of beta things look like. But you know, this thing would theoretically, you know, again, um, extend forever, and and theoretically, the transmission bandwidth is, is is infinite. But is there is there a practical bandwidth? And then in the narrow band FM case, I, I'm just left with those three spectral lines, FC and the ones on either side. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about Bessel functions. And this is just kind of something everyone that studies FM radio knows about this tone modulation case and has run into these Bessel functions. But JN of beta in the evaluation of that Fourier series, you run into this integral, one over two pi, the integral from minus pi to pi of EXP of J beta sine X minus NX DX. Okay. So you can't evaluate that any further. You can find table, it doesn't have a closed form solution. Um, but you can certainly evaluate it numerically uh, using Octave or MATLAB, or you can find tables of these Bessel functions. So here's what J0 looks like as a function of this axis is, is beta. Okay. So they, they look kind of like decreasing, in this case, a cosine wave, or in the others all kind of look like decreasing sine waves, decreasing in amplitude as beta increases. Remember though, what we're, <laughs> what we're doing is looking at these for just one particular value of beta. You know, beta might be six, okay? These things, they depend on beta, but in any particular problem that we're looking at, beta has a fixed value. So we would really say if beta is six, you know, we would get the J zero value the J1 value would be here, the J2, the J3, the J4. There's an infinite number of these things, J5, J6, uh, and so on and so forth. And we would just need all of those values at beta equals six for any particular problem or beta equal 12. Okay. So this graph is showing them as functions of beta, but in any problem we work, we're, we'll, we would just be using a particular value beta. But just a couple of observations. One is as beta gets larger, these things do appear to be, get, be getting smaller in, in amplitude. Okay. Um, and the other is, you know, J0 for small beta is approximately one. J1 for small beta, actually the derivative here is approximately beta. The others are all approximately zero for small values of, of beta. And, and we'll get back to that. But some other just general properties of, of Bessel functions is notice the summation here is from n equal minus infinity to infinity. And I'm just showing the zero values and the positive values of n, j plus one, j plus two. What about j minus one, j minus two? I need all of those to evaluate this sum. Well, fortunately there's, there's some symmetry J n of beta is equal to J minus n of beta for n even and J n of beta is equal to minus J minus n of beta 
for n odd. So knowing that means I don't need all the j minus one plots. The j one is the negative, or the j minus one is the negative of the j one. So it would be the negative of this, it would do this, okay. And then j minus two is actually the same as j two. J minus three is the negative of J three. J four is the same as J four. So I don't need a separate set of plots for all the negative N values if I, if I remember this. Um, another observation for small beta, you can see this J zero beta is, a, is one. J1 of beta is approximately beta over two. Okay, you can't, can't really see that from the plot, but you can see that it does appear to have, you know, uh, for small um, variations from zero, um, it, it does, you know, appear to be a, a linear function of beta there. And for the others, for small small value uh, small deviations of beta from zero, they're approximately zero. And then, so J n of beta is approximately zero for n greater than or equal to two. And this is actually, you know, this is our. Uh, narrow band FM case for small beta. You know, we essentially assume that all these other terms are zero and our summation only involves three terms, minus one, zero, and plus one. Those are essentially the only non-zero terms in this summation. And so again, we just get the, the three spectral lines. So it's, it's always nice when you're generalizing a previous result to see that it reduces to the, the, the simpler case in some sort of limit. And here, this does. So this, this is a more general result than the narrow band case that we looked at last time, uh, but reduces to that. Another property of Bessel functions, and we'll use this in just a bit to show that, to come up with our power relationship. but the sum of the Jn squared terms is equal to one. That's certainly not apparent from, from this plot, but it says at any value of beta at 12, if I take the J zero term squared plus the J one squared term plus the J minus one squared term plus the J two squared term plus the J minus two squared term, sum all those up, I'll get one, no matter what the value of beta is. Okay. And then, in MATLAB and Octave, you want to use the Bessel J function to get, and then with arguments n and beta to get the value. So you, you could actually produce that, that plot pretty easily from MATLAB here. Okay, okay some, some wideband FM properties. One is, the spectrum contains an infinite set of discrete frequencies. At FC plus or minus N FM. Um, for small beta, only J zero beta, J minus one beta, 
and J plus one beta are significant. The others are small enough that they can be ignored. And this is the, this is the narrow band FM case. The amplitude of the carrier component varies with beta. That's the J zero beta term. Okay, the carrier component is you know the, the spectral line that's just at FC, that's with n equal to zero. And that's ACJ0, okay, in here. The, the total power is the total average power would be one half AC squared, the sum from N equal minus infinity to infinity of the JN beta term, beta squared terms. Okay, and that's just, you know, here we've got an infinite number of sinusoids. The power of each one would be the RMS value, AC times the J zero term squared divided by two. So you can factor out the one half AC squared, but we know this is equal to one. So this is one half AC squared, which is the result we had last time that the power is constant in this, in this FM thing. And then the, the final point here is for any beta, the limit as N goes to infinity of JN of beta is zero. So, a finite practical bandwidth may exist. And then here, actually, if we, if we take a look at some, some different pictures, and so these are for different values of beta, betas one, two, and five, and then he's plotting the discrete amplitude. So these are the JN values, you know, J0 here, J1, J2, J3, and so on for the, the different uh, beta values. Sinusoidal mo modulation of fixed frequency and varying amplitude. So here is varying the AM, essentially varying beta by varying the, the amplitude, the amplitude of the modulation. So, so, and keeping FM fixed. So FM is the distance between our spectral lines, but increasing beta by increasing the numerator, keeping FM fixed. And you can see that doing that, um, we're, we're getting a larger and larger bandwidth here. And there's really an infinite number of terms here, but at some point they get so small, he's not plotting them. But increasing beta, we see, and keeping FM fixed, uh, increases the bandwidth. And two delta F appears to be a pretty good approximation to the width. We can see that, you know, there are some terms that extend greater than the two delta F width but you could use this to justify that the transmission brand width is approximately two delta F as beta increases because the two delta F term increases. The delta F is, yeah, it's the numerator here. Okay. So it's essentially increasing delta F keeping FM fixed and you get a set of pictures like that 
this is increasing beta by keeping delta F fixed, but decreasing FM. Okay, so the spectral lines get closer and closer. And here again, we can see that two delta F is in a reasonable estimation of, well, in this case, the two delta F doesn't change. Delta F's the numerator. We're actually just uh, getting the, the spectral lines closer and closer together. But two delta F is a reasonable bound for the total width of this thing. So the, the good news is, based on those pictures, And this is the main point of all of this. For small beta, the transmission bandwidth is approximately 2 FM. Okay, this, that's the result we had last time, or 2 W. Okay. Two times the, the, the frequency of our uh, um, tone. For large beta, it looks like a better bound is two delta F. Two times, and delta F is the range of the instantaneous frequency from the carrier. So two delta F is the, the total change in instantaneous frequency below and above the carrier frequency. So, uh, there's a rule called Carson's rule. I don't recall his first name. And he came up with this equation that's widely used to estimate the, the bandwidth of FM. It's really just the sum of these two, two delta F plus two FM. In the narrow band FM case, delta F is small. Okay. And in that case, this reduces to two FM. And the wideband FM case, delta F is large compared to FM, and it reduces to approximately two delta F. So you can write this as you know, two delta F plus FM, or that's also, if you factor out an FM, delta F over FM is beta. So, you can write it that way. It's, it's two times the width of my tone times beta plus one. So again, for small beta, this reduces to two FM. Small beta, this reduces to one. For large beta, beta being uh, delta F over FM, this reduces to two delta F. Okay, so here, here's the types of problems that you'd be asked to work. Tone modulation with FM equal 10 kilohertz. Delta F is five kilohertz. find the transmission bandwidth. Now, I'll also say that Carson's rule is used more than just for the tone modulation case. So, so in general here, FM would be our message bandwidth, our baseband message bandwidth. And instead of FM here, we would use W. So if it's an audio signal with a, with a frequency, with a maximum frequency of, of five kilohertz, we'd use five kilohertz in here. If it's an audio signal with a maximum frequency of maybe 15 kilohertz, we would use 15 kilohertz in here. So we would use the maximum frequency in the, in the signal in place of the FM that, that appears here. So again, it's an approximation, but it, it gives a reasonable it gives a reasonable approximation to the bandwidth based on you know, making spectral measurements. Okay, so it's, it's fairly accurate. So what's, what's the transmission bandwidth here? 
So for, for AM, it would be two times FM would be 20 kilohertz, right? What is it here with, with FM? So beta is delta F over FM. And again, we could estimate it directly from that other formula there. It's, it's twice the sum of these two. Two times 15, it's gonna be 30 kilohertz. Um, delta F in this, or, uh, beta in this case is delta F over FM or one half. This is a narrow band kilohertz case or a narrow band FM case. Um, we could say it's two FM plus two delta F or 30 kilohertz. This is from Carson's rule. Um, if we treat this as narrow band FM, which we really said beta is much, much less than one. Yeah. It, there, our approximation was beta T is approximately two times the message bandwidth would be 20 kilohertz. Yeah. Carson's rule provides a better estimate actually. You know, it's a, a little broader than our narrow band FM case, but this isn't quite narrow band FM either. Okay. Uh, Let's say baseband with W equal to five kilohertz. Beta is equal to five. Find the transmission bandwidth. I'll give you a couple minutes to work that out. So. So there's two ways that you could do this. You could take the formula, you know, two FM times beta plus one from Carson's rule. Or, but now interpret FM as the maximum frequency in our baseband message. So in that case, it would be five kilohertz. So this would be 10 times six or 60 kilohertz. The other way is beta is delta F over FM. I mean, the way I remember, I remember it's a ratio of delta F to FM, you know, which one goes in the numerator. As the instantaneous, as delta F gets larger, beta gets larger. So delta F's in the numerator. So, but we can use that to actually solve for delta F here. Delta F is beta FM or five times 25 kilohertz. Okay, so what that means is the instantaneous frequency would go tw approximately 25 kilohertz above the carrier and 25 kilohertz below the carrier. Okay. And the, the, the total transmission bandwidth is uh, two delta F plus W. So 25 plus five is 30 times two is the 60 kilohertz. Okay, it'll give you the same result for transmission bandwidth. 
he does have in the in the textbook uh, this what's he call it a, a universal curve for determining you know the one percent bandwidth. This is different than the Carson's rule bandwidth. Carson's rule tends to underestimate the bandwidth slightly. Okay, it's a widely used approximation to the bandwidth of FM. Notice here, FM typically has a wider bandwidth than AM radio. I mean, the narrow band FM case is equal to AM radio, but generally uh, with, with FM radio, it's, it's much wider than, than AM. We'll see there's a trade-off between how good it sounds and bandwidth. So the wider the bandwidth, the, the better the fidelity. So, but this curve, it's the ratio of the transmission bandwidth to delta F. So in that particular, that last problem, the way you'd use this, beta is equal to five. So we come up here about that point. I don't know, it looks like this ratio, what I get to about three and a half maybe. So beta T, the transmission bandwidth would be uh, three and a half times delta F. For that problem, delta F was 25. So three and a half is gonna be 75 plus 12, 87 or something instead of 60 is what you'd get from that curve for the transmission bandwidth. And Carson's rule underestimates the bandwidth a little bit. And it's a narrower bandwidth than, the, than this 1% bandwidth. So um, you, know, you could use this curve, almost always all radio engineers will talk about the the bandwidth based on Carson's rule. It's a well-known you know, approximation for the, the bandwidth of FM. Uh, standard FM radio uses, I think the uh, estimated bandwidth is 75 kilohertz for, uh, no, that's the, that's the frequency deviation. So and it, it's wide band, so the uh, bandwidth is approximately twice that, about 150 kilohertz. On the FM radio dial, they are 0.2 megahertz apart, 98.6, 98.8 on your dial. That's in, that's in megahertz, so it's 0.2 megahertz or 200 kilohertz apart uh, between the radio stations. So, you know, 150 kilohertz bandwidth uh, for 200 kilohertz spacing is, there's some other stuff with going on with FM that we'll talk about. Uh, FM has uh, stereos. Modern FM radio actually supports a stereo, so you actually get two signals mixed in there, whereas, whereas AM is just um, a mono. You just get one signal with AM radio. So but we'll talk more about that actually in the future. That's it for today. So.